Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put this all together, right? So I kind of we kind of split it up. You know, I gave you a, a sort of power series and a sort of expanded form. You had to find the closed form. Uh, then you had to find the radius of convergence and then the interval of, of convergence. Now what happens if I just give you a series, a power series, S of X, this one's centered at five, and we want to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence all in one fail swoop. So this is a little bit easier to do when you do it all together. And so here my A sub n's are simply equal to X minus five to the nth power divided by N. And I'm going to run the ratio test on this. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So you look at the next term divided by the previous term. And this is equal to uh, what? This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, and you just plug in n plus 1 wherever you see an n, so x minus 5 the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And this is all divided by then your a sub n, which is just x minus 5 to the n divided by n. And so then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, so the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value of x minus 5. You kind of see where we're going already. You know, things, lots of things are going to cancel but to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 times an n divided by x plus or x minus 5. So x minus 5 down here to the n. And so this will be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the x the minus 5 to the n plus 1. The n plus the n's are going to cancel here. And so I'm just going to get an absolute value of x minus 5. And then I have an n on top and an n plus 1 on the bottom. I can pull those out because they're positive and we're multiplying. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of n divided by n plus 1, all times the absolute value of x minus 5. The only thing that really matters right here is what as n goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, the only thing that really matters is this thing right here. This is the only thing that's going to change. And this thing is going to go to number 1 because it's n divided by n plus 1. So there's only the n's that really matter. So the 1 you can forget about because you're going to infinity. So you're just going to get 1 times x minus 5. And we want that to be less than 1 so that this thing converges. So therefore, s of x, well here, let's do it like this. So therefore, my r is equal to 1 by the ratio test. By the ratio test. And to find the interval of convergence, we just interpret this. So, you know, what does this mean, this absolute value of x minus 5 less than 1? So that means you're centered at 5, and you're going 1 forward, which is 6, and 1 back, which is 4. So we know that it converges, right? We're good. We have convergence between 4 and 6 by the ratio test. And so our only question is, what happens when x is 4 versus what happens when x is 6? And so we look at that, so look at s of 4, and look at s of 6. And so the idea is just plug in 4 for x, and so we're going to get the sum, n equals 2 to infinity. And then when you plug in 4 here, you get 4 minus 5, which is a negative 1, so we get negative 1 to the n, divided by n. And then look at the next one, when you plug in 6, so n is equal to 2 to the infinity, it says. If you plug in 6, 6 minus 5 is 1. And remember, 1 to the n is just 1. So you just get 1 over n. And so now this top series right here, this one, it's going to converge by the alternating series test. The terms are decreasing. Well, the absolute value of the terms are decreasing and going to 0. And so this one will converge. 
the series converges by the alternating series test. You don't have to write the test any you don't have to run the test. You should write it down though. That's part of the problem by alternating series test. And this series is going to right, it diverges. It diverges by what? Um, well, here, let's just, well, it diverges because it's a P-series, right? So it diverges because it is a P-series. with p equal to 1. So therefore, therefore what? Therefore, s of x converges on, and we have from 4 to 6, and we're going to include 4 because that's where it converges. Right, so we're going to include 4 because it converges at 4, so close bracket 4, and then up to 6, but don't include 6 because that's where it diverges. But that's our interval of convergence. You have your radius of convergence, and we have our interval of convergence. And so remember, what does that mean? You can plug in numbers between 4 and 6, and you can plug in 4 into our s of x and get out a number. But if you try to plug in numbers outside this interval of convergence, typically they won't make sense because it does not converge there. So it would be fine to plug in numbers like s of um, 3. Right? It's fine to plug in s of 3. That would make sense. But you could not plug in uh, like s of 7 right? because 7 is not in your interval of convergence. So that will not make uh, sense. Right? So s of 3 good, s of 7 bad. So let's review real quickly what we've what we've sort of done here. So the idea is you have some sort of uh, power series, right? So the sum uh, c sub n x minus a uh, to the n. A is where the power series is centered. C sub n are some sort of numbers. Our goal is to try to figure out sort of this radius of convergence. Like where does this thing actually converge? What kind of numbers uh, can you plug uh, in for it, right? So if you think about this as a function. Some things you can plug in and some things you can't. Right, so what can you plug in here? So we find our radius of convergence, which then will lead to our interval of convergence. And so then we can conclude stuff like, okay, well, s of x will converge on some interval a to b. And you may include the endpoints or you may not include the endpoints. It depends on the series that's given. Um, and then later, we'll show that how these power series can be connected to a function. So in essence, what these power series really are, they act as sort of like the DNA of functions. And we'll talk more about that uh, later.